Welcome to Immortal News. On this poignant day, September 16th, the world joins hands in remembrance of 12 illustrious souls who, though no longer with us, continue to illuminate our lives with their legacy. These exceptional individuals, through their unique journeys, have etched imprints of inspiration, love, and creativity across our global tapestry. Our hearts resonate with the sorrows of their loved ones, and we extend our profound condolences to every individual mourning their departure. Today's segment doesn't merely pay homage to these luminaries, but also brings to the forefront updates about the well-being of Teddy Mellencamp and reality TV sensation Shagna Phillips. Additionally, we highlight the concerns fans have shared regarding the health of renowned influencer Eugenia Cooney. As we navigate through these heartfelt narratives, we request a moment of your time for engagement. A simple thumbs up embodies your solidarity, and should you feel a deeper connection, the thanks button echoes our mutual respect and admiration for these stories. Every interaction signifies your support and further invigorates our mission to bring these tales to you with the dignity and empathy they deserve. From every corner of our Immortal News family, we thank you for sharing in this collective moment of reflection and tribute. Number 12, Ben Cull, a rising star with unyielding spirit. Ben Cull, the ex-England youth star and former Southampton Academy player, passed away at the age of 23 after a courageous battle with Ewing's sarcoma, a rare bone and soft tissue disease, on September 16th. The young athlete was diagnosed at just 17, and his condition worsened in recent months, prompting him to propose to his longtime girlfriend, Daisy Morrison. He passed away just weeks after their engagement, leaving behind a legacy of unwavering resilience and love. Cole's promising soccer career began in Southampton's academy, and by the summer of 2015 he was part of their under-18 squad. He also earned two caps for England's youth team before his fight with cancer forced an untimely halt to his burgeoning career in 2018. Despite his condition, Cole continued to be an inspiration showing an indomitable will to fight and never give up, a trait that resonated deeply with everyone who knew him. The news of his passing was shared in an emotional post by his fiancée, Daisy Morrison, who described Cull as her whole life and soulmate. His family and friends are united in their grief, remembering him not just as an exceptional soccer player, but also as a loving, brave young man who fought hard until the very end. In his short life, Cull left an indelible mark on those around him, offering lessons in courage, love, and making the most of every moment. Tribute to Ben Cull. Number 11, Diego Arrua, a pillar in the boxing world and devoted partner. Diego Arrua, the veteran Argentine boxing trainer and husband of boxer Sabrina Maribel Perez, passed away suddenly at the age of 58 on September 15th evening in Tijuana, Mexico. The tragedy occurred during his wife's interim WBC featherweight title, defense against Australia's Sky Nicholson. Arrua suffered a heart attack between rounds 9 and 10 of the fight and was immediately rushed to QDP General Hospital, where he was pronounced dead at around 9.30 p.m. local time. Arua had been an instrumental figure in the world of boxing, not just as a seasoned trainer, but also as a partner who stood in the corner for his wife, Perez. Their relationship was a unique blend of personal and professional commitment, making them a celebrated duo in boxing circles. Under Arua's guidance, Perez, the former WBO bantamweight titleist, claimed her interim WBC featherweight title in March earlier this year. The couple was also known for their philanthropic efforts in their hometown of Isidro Casanova, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Throughout their careers, they took time to give back to their community, amplifying the impact of Arua's legacy beyond the boxing ring. In the wake of this tragic loss, condolences and prayers have poured in from across the boxing world including from Nicholson's team and boxing promoters. Maurizio Sulaiman, the WBC president, expressed deep sadness on social media, 
as did Matchroom Boxing, saying, Our thoughts and condolences are with Sabrina Perez and your loved ones. Tribute to Diego Arua. Number 10. Ron Barassi, a revolutionary icon in Australian football. Ron Barassi, an indisputable legend in Australian Football League, passed away on September 16th at the age of 87 due to complications from a fall. He died peacefully, surrounded by his loving family. Barassi was instrumental both as a player and a coach, racking up 10 premierships during his illustrious career. He played 253 senior VFL games, including 204 for Melbourne and 49 for Carlton, and was a pillar of strength during Melbourne Football Club's glory years, contributing to six premierships between 1955 and 1964. A pioneer in the sport, Barassi created the position of Ruck Rover and revolutionized how the game was played. Moving on to coaching, he led Carlton to two premierships and North Melbourne to their first two flags in 1975 and 1977, Barassi was an inaugural inductee into the Australian Football Hall of Fame in 1996 and was also the first to be named an AFL legend. His contributions were not limited to the field. Barassi was a driving force in nationalizing the sport, advocating for its expansion into New South Wales and Queensland. Barassi was part of a football lineage. His father, Ron Barassi Sr., also played for Melbourne and was killed in action during World War II. Thanks to the father-son rule introduced in the VFL in 1949, Barassi could follow in his father's footsteps and join the Demons, despite initial zoning issues. His legacy stretches far beyond the accolades and titles. Barassi will always be remembered as a fierce competitor, an innovative strategist, and a beloved figure in the Australian sporting community. Tribute to Ron Barassi. Number 9. Vanessa Show, a trailblazer for trans artists and a pillar in Argentine entertainment. Vanessa Show, one of Argentina's pioneering trans artists, passed away at the age of 77 on September 15th. The Argentine Association of Actors and Actresses confirmed her death, heralding her as a revolutionary force who paved the way for future generations of trans artists. Vanessa was born on September 27th in La Banda, Santiago del Estero, and began her artistic journey as a vedette at the young age of 17 at the Maipo Theatre. She shared the stage with legendary figures like Nelida Roca and Nelida Lobato. In her illustrious career, Vanessa graced numerous musical and magazine shows including Corrientes Corner Champs Elysees, Porcuapa, Las Gatas Calientes en el Tejado del Corrientes, and La Revista del Tercer. Her contributions to cinema include the film Las Pils alongside Dario Vittori and Susana Brunetti. Vanessa also found success internationally, touring France, Spain, Germany, Switzerland, and Italy. Faced with persecution and threats during the tumultuous 1970s, she sought exile in Europe. She returned to Argentina in the 1990s, continuing her career with numerous television appearances and even writing her memoirs in a book titled, It's True. Her story was also captured in the short film, Diva, by Juan de Francesco. Vanessa's journey was marked not just by talent, but by resilience. She achieved stardom during a time when society was far less accepting, becoming a beacon for other aspiring trans artists. In a past interview, Vanessa reflected on her struggle and triumph, stating, I made myself. It was during the time of the dictatorship. I didn't even think about being a transvestite. Vanessa is remembered not only for her extraordinary talent, but for the barriers she broke leaving an indelible impact on both the entertainment industry and the LGBTQ plus community in Argentina and beyond. Tribute to Vanessa Show. Number 8. 
Paul Wozine, a trailblazer in Australian rock music. Paul Wozine, Australian rock legend and founding member of the Screaming Jets, passed away at the age of 56 on September 15th. The news was confirmed by the band through a social media post on Friday night, describing him as their beloved brother in rock. Born in Newcastle, Wozine helped form the Screaming Jets in 1989, joining forces with vocalist Dave Gleason, guitarists Grant Walmsley and Richard Lara, and drummer Brad Heaney. The band rose to fame in the 1990s, charting three top five Australian area albums, including All for One, Tear of Thought, and The Screaming Jets. One of their most notable hit singles, Better, also hailed from their debut album. Wozine was not just a bass guitarist, but also a songwriter, penning over 30 songs across seven albums for the band during his career spanning four decades. His contributions to the Australian rock scene were immeasurable, earning him the respect and admiration of both fans and fellow musicians. Tributes have been pouring in, highlighting Wosin's exceptional talent and warm personality. Guitarist Nick Rashka reminisced about the wild times he had while playing gigs with Wosin, and another tribute mentioned Wosin's voice as one that would put most lead singers to shame. The band was scheduled for a four-month world tour in November, following the release of their upcoming album Professional Misconduct on October 6th. It remains unclear whether the tour will proceed in the wake of Wosin's untimely death. The cause of his death has not yet been disclosed. Wosin leaves behind a legacy of musical brilliance and enduring influence on the Australian rock landscape. His absence will surely be felt, but his impact on the world of music will undoubtedly live on. Tribute to Paul Wosin. Number 7. Claude Cormier, Transforming Canadian Public Spaces into Celebrations of Joy Claude Cormier, one of Canada's most acclaimed landscape architects, passed away in Montreal at the age of 63 due to complications from Lee Fraumeni syndrome on September 15. Known for redefining public spaces in Montreal and Toronto, Cormier's designs were emblematic of joy, creativity, and community spirit. His firm, now CCXA, described him as the mastermind behind some of Canada's most vibrant public spaces, such as Toronto's Berksy Park Dog Fountain and the festive canopy of plastic balls in Montreal's Village District. Cormier's portfolio spanned high traffic areas like Montreal's Place du Ville and Dorchester Square, as well as uniquely innovative spaces like Toronto's Sugar Beach, known for its pink parasols and candy-striped rocks. He also contributed to the design of the National Holocaust Monument in Ottawa, and was in the process of completing Leslie Lookout Park in Toronto's Portlands district. Two of his final masterpieces were The Ring, a 30-meter suspended steel hoop in downtown Montreal, and Toronto's heart-shaped love park, both described as love letters to his favorite cities. Starting his career in the early 1990s, Cormier pushed the boundaries of Canadian landscape architecture. He is survived by his mother, sister, brother, nieces, nephew, and a community of friends and colleagues who admired his visionary work. Montreal Mayor Valérie Plante mourned his passing as an immense loss, acknowledging his role in elevating Montreal's international reputation in design. Policy Director at Heritage Montreal, Dinu Bambaru, emphasized that Cormier's poetic creations have reignited an appreciation for the heritage that current generations can offer to city landscapes. Tribute to Claude Cormier. Number 6. Carol Harder, a pillar of academic leadership and advocate for gender equality. Carol Harder, the longest serving and first female president of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, passed away at the age of 82 on September 14. The news was confirmed by multiple sources on Friday. Born in Brooklyn, New York in 1941, Harder led UNLV from 1995 until 2006, steering it through a period of significant expansion and academic diversification. Prior to her role at UNLV, Harder served as the president of the State University of New York at Geneseo, 
and was a faculty member and vice president at Ohio University. Although she held advanced degrees in English and American literature, Harder's leadership marked a transformative era for UNLV across various departments. She was pivotal in the creation of numerous graduate programs, including UNLV's School of Dental Medicine and the Boyd School of Law. Harder also established the Women's Research Institute of Nevada, advancing gender equality on campus. She wasn't just an academic leader, but also a philanthropist. Along with her husband, she created the Dr. S. Michael and Carol C. Harder Endowed Scholarship for Minorities at Ohio University. In 1989, Ohio University honored her with an honorary doctorate of humane letters for her exemplary service to higher education. Harder's 11-year tenure made her the longest-serving president at an institution often marred by administrative discontinuity. After stepping down, she founded the Black Mountain Institute, an international think tank dedicated to promoting literacy and cross-cultural dialogue. She was also known for her ambitious fundraising efforts, including the Invent the Future campaign, which secured significant contributions such as a $15 million donation from the Ernest W. Lyde Foundation for a state-of-the-art campus library. Current UNLV President Keith Whitfield remarked that Harder's legacy is forever woven into the fabric of this university, emphasizing her vision for UNLV to become a major research university. As an advocate for gender equality and a strong believer in the power of education, Harder leaves behind an indelible legacy that will continue to shape the institution she loved so dearly. Tribute to Carol Harder. Number 5. Roy Roper, a centenarian all-black and unsung hero of New Zealand rugby. Roy Roper, a name etched in the annals of New Zealand rugby, passed away on September 14 at the age of 100. Born on August 11, 1923, he celebrated a milestone birthday just weeks prior, becoming the first former all-black to reach the age of 100. Roper's son, Guy, remembered him as a devoted father and someone who spent much of his life contributing to family, friends, and community. Roper's rugby career was as remarkable as it was challenging. Representing Taranaki provincially, he wore the black jersey for the All Blacks in 1949 and 1950. Despite being overlooked for South Africa's apartheid-influenced tour, Roper's skill on the field was undeniable. He made his debut against the Wallabies in 1949 and was part of the All Blacks series against the touring British and Irish Lions in 1950. His wit remained sharp throughout his life, once quipping that the most memorable part of playing in rugby's amateur era was the pay I got, referring to the scant earnings players received back then. Beyond rugby, Roper served overseas with the Royal New Zealand Navy during World War II and played for various New Zealand services rugby teams. In one extraordinary encounter, he was on board the Queen Mary alongside British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, responsible for sentry duties under the alias Colonel Warden. Roper later contributed his financial acumen as the treasurer for the Taranaki Rugby Football Union from 1952 to 1971. After retiring, he focused on his accounting studies, building a family home, and starting a family. Despite fading eyesight in his later years, Roper remained a fervent supporter of the All Blacks through radio commentaries. As the oldest living All Black following Ron Elvidge's passing in 2019, Roper's death marks the end of an era. He leaves a legacy that goes beyond his rugby accomplishments, one that encompasses family, community, and a life lived to its fullest extent. Tribute to Roy Roper. Number 4. Olaf Björner, the unparalleled documentarian of Bob Dylan's career. Olaf Björner, the Swedish researcher renowned for his meticulous documentation of Bob Dylan's live performances and recording sessions, passed away on September 12th at the age of 80. Born in Stockholm in 1942, Björner was initially a computer consultant before he and his wife Agneta bought a bookstore in 2003. His passion for Dylan's work led him to create Björner.com, and author a 13-volume set 
Olaf's Files, a Bob Dylan performance guide, praised for its extraordinary detail and phenomenal accuracy by critics like Michael Gray. Björner initially became interested in Dylan in 1963 and self-published his first work on the artist, Words Fill My Head, written, spoken, sung by Bob Dylan in 1989. His dedication to documenting Dylan's work has left an indelible mark on the field of music research and provided an invaluable resource for Dylan aficionados worldwide. Tribute to Olaf Björner. Number 3. Hans Plank, an Olympian, world champion, and pillar of Luger sport. Hans Plank, the esteemed luge athlete and flag bearer for Germany at the 1968 Winter Olympics in Grenoble, passed away peacefully at home on September 10th and at the age of 85. Plank first rose to prominence with a bronze medal at the 1964 Winter Olympics in Innsbruck, sharing the podium with fellow Germans Thomas Kohler and Klaus Michael Bonsack. A year later, he seized the world title in Davos, a high point in a career peppered with world championship medals. Known for his sportsmanship and dedication, Plank continued to contribute to the world of luge long after his athletic career ended. He became the first board member to successfully lead his hometown club, R.C. Berchtesgaden, and judged numerous international and national competitions, including all World Cups held at Königsee. He also served as president and honorary member of the Bavarian Bobsley and Sled Sports Association. His death comes as a poignant moment, just days ahead of the 100th anniversary celebration of the RCB, and following the deaths of other significant figures in German luge, including Sepp Lenz and Bonsack. Tribute to Hans Plank. Breaking news, News 1. Reality TV star turned new, mom Shauna Phillips is facing some real-world challenges, both heartwarming and harrowing. Fresh from welcoming her first baby, Lucia, with boyfriend Billy Webb, Phillips recently underwent a traumatic colposcopy after her cervical screening. Despite the ordeal triggering a panic attack, the Love Island alum took to social media to advocate for the importance of smear tests in women's health. On a softer note, she also revealed the emotional backstory behind Lucia's double-barreled surname, a tribute to her late father, whose legacy she vows to keep alive. From breaking taboos around body positivity to opening up about health and family, Phillips is turning her platform into an arena for real, raw conversations. News 2. Influencer Eugenia Cooney has once again ignited a firestorm of concern and debate across social media platforms due to her jarringly thin appearance. Known for her ultra-thin body, Cooney had previously been to rehab for an eating disorder, but recent posts suggest her condition might be worsening. The dilemma has fans and critics split, while some urge immediate medical intervention for Eugenia. Others call for her removal from platforms like Instagram and TikTok to prevent potential negative influence on impressionable followers. Despite a past petition to ban her from YouTube, the influencer has largely remained online, yet her decreasing weight in 2023 has rekindled calls for action. As online debates rage on, the overarching sentiment remains. Eugenia Cooney is in dire need of help. The uncertainty now lies in the form that help should take, medical treatment or a social media blackout. It's a complex issue that has sparked questions about the responsibility of social media platforms, influencers, and the audience at large, as we all wait with bated breath for any update on Cooney's health. Teddy Mellencamp's unyielding fight against melanoma, an emotional update, and a call to action. Reality TV star Teddy Mellencamp is back in the spotlight, but this time it's for a sobering reason. In an emotional Instagram revelation, the former Real Housewives of Beverly Hills cast member announced yet another melanoma diagnosis. This marks one in a staggering series of around 12 diagnoses she's received in just the last 18 months. Mellencamp initially hesitated to share her health ordeal, but ultimately chose transparency to serve as a life-saving reminder for her followers. Every time I post about skin cancer, someone else is reminded to get checked, she courageously shared. Amid her whirlwind of emotions and disrupted sleep, 
Mellencamp is prepping for additional biopsies and another surgery next week. Despite the challenges, she implores others to remain optimistic and grateful. We can do hard things. If you're feeling lost or scared today, jot down things you're thankful for. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Masa Amini, a tragic loss sparking calls for justice and reform in Iran. Masa Amini, a 22-year-old Iranian woman who was detained by Iran's morality police for allegedly violating the country's strict dress code, passed away on September 16 in 2022. The circumstances surrounding her death remain murky and contentious, eliciting widespread calls for justice both inside and outside of Iran. Arrested on a family visit to Tehran, Amini fell into a coma a few hours post-arrest and died days later. According to reports, she had suffered a blow to the head, although the exact circumstances are still under investigation. Amini's death has ignited furor and catalyzed protests in Iran with activists and international organizations, including Amnesty International, demanding a thorough criminal investigation into her suspicious demise. Despite the Iranian government's insistence that there was no physical encounter between Amini and the officers, allegations of torture and ill-treatment have been raised. Her death has intensified scrutiny over Iran's morality police, known as the Guidance Patrol, and their enforcement methods of the country's forced veiling laws. Beyond its borders, the incident has attracted global attention and condemnation. Robert Malley, the U.S. envoy for Iran, expressed that those responsible must be held accountable. While activists warn that Amini's case symbolizes a broader crackdown on civil liberties in Iran, the tragedy has shed light on the broader human rights abuses in the country, including against women, religious minorities, and other marginalized groups, while underscoring the urgent need for reform. Tribute to Masa Amini. Number 1. Jane Powell, a shining star of Hollywood's golden age of musicals. Jane Powell, a radiant talent who graced the silver screen in some of Hollywood's most iconic golden age musicals, passed away on September 16, in 2021 at the age of 92. She died of natural causes at her home in Wilton, Connecticut, where she had resided with her late fifth husband, actor Dick Moore. The news was confirmed by her lifelong friend Susan Granger, whom she had met on the set of her debut film, Song of the Open Road. Born in 1929 in Portland, Oregon, Powell was a prodigious talent from a young age. She started her artistic journey at just five years old, performing in theaters and on the radio. By the time she was 15, she had made her film debut, setting the stage for a luminous career in Hollywood. She starred in several hit musicals in the 1940s and 50s, most notably Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, alongside Howard Keel and Royal Wedding, where she dazzled audiences with Fred Astaire. Her singing, dancing, and acting skills made her a triple threat, and she left an indelible mark on American cinema. In her personal life, Powell was known for her loyalty and candor. Granger described her as delightfully droll and candid, stating that Powell never shied away from answering any question with complete honesty. Powell's honesty and openness extended beyond her friends, as she was always candid in interviews and public appearances, making her a beloved figure both on and off screen. Powell was a five-time bride, her last marriage being to actor Dick Moore until his passing. She is survived by three children and two grandchildren, who inherit a legacy rich with artistic achievement and personal integrity. Tribute to Jane Powell. As we wrap up today's heartfelt segment, we're reminded of the intricate web of life, each thread representing stories, memories, and the enduring legacies of remarkable souls who've profoundly impacted our lives. If you missed our previous exploration, we urge you to journey back to yesterday's episode where we celebrated the tales of 15 more illustrious individuals. Their stories, though set in the past, carry timeless lessons and inspiration for us all. Stay with Immortal News as we continue our mission. 
diving deep into the stories that form the bedrock of our collective history and ethos. If today's narratives touched a chord, please consider sharing this segment, allowing these cherished memories to reverberate across hearts and horizons. From the heart of immortal news, we extend our gratitude for your continued trust and connection. Until we converge again, let's reflect, cherish, and revere the souls who've beautifully shaped our shared tapestry.